Hello, this is Charlene Carla. Welcome to NASA. This is my Narcissistic Abuse Survivor Autobiography, where I share my testimony to help you along your healing journey. Now today, ladies and gentlemen, I kind of feel like a basketball player, right? Because I'm wearing two shirts here, but I wanted to wear my beautiful locked tank top, and but didn't want to be all exposed for you to world, okay? <laughs> but this shirt is the definition of a lot. Uh, committed is one of the definitions and dedicated is one of the definitions, okay? So you guys are on your lock journey. You are committed. Stay dedicated. It is a journey. Enjoy it. It's a beautiful journey, okay? <laughs> so today, our topic is good thing versus God thing, okay? There's only like one letter off between good and God. So sometimes we think, hmm, this relationship is so good. This person is so good for me, but it's not a God thing. Sometimes in business, we think this business partnership is gonna be a good, profitable thing and my net worth is gonna skyrocket and it looks like a good thing but it's not a god thing it's a difference okay so we can be committed to a good thing we can be dedicated to a good thing and god's in heaven like i did not authorize that okay i know the plans that i have for you and that that's not it so um when we talk about today so yeah Scripture reading part is going to be a little bit uh, unique today because I'm really trying to drive home this good versus God thing, okay? So we're going all the way to Genesis. In the beginning, it was the word. All right, okay. So I'm going to start off in Genesis chapter 1. We're to talk about creation. God created the moon and the stars and the skies and the sun and, 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 and the earth and the waters and he separated it and he, he made the plants, he made the people, he made the animals and the, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea and the beasts of the field. And, right? What did he say? It's good. You know, every day, day one, you know, the evening and the morning or the first day, Day two, day three, day four, day five, day six. It is good. It's good. He saw that it was good. He made it and saw that it was good. Okay, so in chapter one, verse 31, it says, And God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Okay? God made everything and said, Wow, this is very good good okay only thing that he said and you know these first couple of chapters that was not good is man being alone okay that was chapter 2 verse 18 and the lord god said it is not good that the man should be alone i will make it help me for him okay everything else was good was very good everything okay even um jump back to today um in chapter 2 verse 9 and he said out of the ground made the lord god to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight remember that something may look good to your natural eyeballs okay but if you're not looking at it with your spiritual sight remember we walk by faith not by sight so okay so he made every tree that was pleasing to the sight and good for food, okay? The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So that's where poor little uh, Eve got tripped up, okay? Because she's like, well, this is pleasant to my eyeballs, okay? Remember the serpent, chapter three, the fall of man. Like we were made in chapter two, chapter three, we're already sitting, like, <laughs> okay, that's why. God's like, I know you were, you know, shaping in iniquity and, and sin did your mother conceive you, like David said in one of the beautiful Psalms. So he's like, I get it. Your dust, your dust, I get it when you sin. Just repent. 
just return back to me. Let Jesus be your mediator and help you cleanse you with the wash of the water by the word, okay? God, God understands, all right? So now in chapter 3, verse 6, this is when Eve, the woman saw again with her natural eyes that the tree of good and evil, the knowledge of good and evil, was good for food, okay? Why? Because she's sitting there chit-chatting with Satan himself, okay? Doesn't even realize it because she's operating off of her natural eyeballs, okay? So I get it. You met the narcissist. They were, he was a handsome man. If you're a king out there, she was a beautiful woman with your natural eyes. You saw, okay, they were pleasing to your sight, to your natural sight. You saw them in the natural and they looked good and they sounded good, you know, especially for women, you know, usually, you know, they say, tell me in the comments that this is true. You know, men are like, you know, they're sight driven. So they're, they're looking at the woman like, ooh, I see, I see, I see. And women, we are listening to what you're saying. So if you're whispering sweet nothings into our ears, then that's how we're falling in love with you. So tell me in the comments if that's true or not. And so we, we think, you know, this is pleasing to my sight and pleasing to my hearing. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you see this, we need to be looking with our natural eyes. We need to be listening with our, you know, no, looking with our spiritual eyes, okay? And listening with our spiritual eyes. Ears. It's all about faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We walk by faith, not by sight. Okay? All right. All right. So, these things, these relationships, we think they're good. We may even think that they're a God thing. We talked about that today. But they're not. You said only. You, 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 you add one O to God and it's good. You take away an O from good and it's God. So you're thinking, oh, if it's good, it must be God. If it's God, it must be good. It Hello. Okay. Blessings of the Lord. Make it rich and have no sorrow. Okay. So when it's a good thing, you will have peace. Okay. Kingdom is, you know, peace and joy, righteousness in the Holy Ghost. Okay. Move to a new city. We think it's a good move. This is a good move for me to move two hours north into a whole new city and a whole new county. And but but if God Himself did not order my steps, David that said, "Order my steps in Your Word." Like Your Word is a lamp unto my feet and light unto my path. So if God did not order my steps up here. Okay, again, we, we want God's perfect will. We know he has plans for us, okay? Plans to prosper us, bring us to a, 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 an expected end, okay? So we have to trust him. We have to have faith in him. So we have to ask God, okay? We can't just be out here willy-nilly doing stuff and things and hopping in and out of marriages two and three times, okay? Hopping in and out of business relationships, five and six times, just like, oh, well, I thought it was a good thing. I thought it was a good thing. I thought it was a good thing. God's in heaven like, it wasn't a God thing. I didn't tell you to do that, okay? So you see in the Bible how from day one, day two, day three, in the beginning, in Genesis, God's like, everything that I made is good. He is Elohim, our creator. He's like, it's very good. Everything is good. It's very good. Like I said, the only thing he said that wasn't good was that man was alone. Okay? That, that's it. But when we start walking by sight instead of by faith, like poor little Eve did, then we're like, oh, but it's pleasing to my sight. And it looks like it's good for food. And it's so because the enemy is deceiving her. Because God already gave Adam the commandment, don't, don't eat from that tree. I made, I made 8 billion trees, and this is the tree you decide to eat from? Like, really? The tree that I specifically said, don't eat from it? Or is she going to go bye-bye? 
Now he's talking about a spiritual death, okay? Because they, they lived for like, what, 900 years, right? So they didn't die physically. That death was a separation. Okay, one day they're walking in the cool of the day with the Lord in the garden. The next day, they're hiding from him because they know that they're naked now because they ate this apple. Okay, again, the apple is on the you know, back of all our idols. Right? Okay, so let, let's, let's open our spiritual eyes. Let's open our spiritual ears. Let's walk by faith and not by sight. Let's learn to recognize, is this a good thing or is this a God thing? Because even though it's good, it looks good, it sounds good, um, on paper we're reading it and, 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 and I, you can imagine that this is going to be a good thing and a good relationship and a good business deal. But it's not a God thing. And if it's not God, we don't want it. Okay? Okay. So, <laughs> number number two. Mr. PK, member. When I met him, I was just, when I say just, just coming out of religion and transitioning into relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay? So I still, I didn't know hmm, the word. I, I didn't know it. I didn't, you know, even though I had a Bible for I don't know how many years, but chilling in the Catholic church, you don't need a Bible, do you? No, don't, don't need one. It's a rosary, right? And a missalette every Sunday, right? That's all you need. So I had, even though I had a Bible from my daughter's grandmother, thank you, Jesus, God bless her, right? How am I going to study the Bible by myself? How am I going to know what to read? She had actually, um, she gave me a parallel Bible and actually went through it and highlighted some stuff. But, I've, I, you know, I've never been trained, you know, how to pray. I've never learned the word. I've never meditated on it. So I, I didn't know, right? So when I meet him, I'm thinking it's a God thing because he looks good physically um to me it's a good thing that he's in the church and and in the choir and to me it's a good thing that his father is a pastor and has his own church so i'm looking at all this stuff as it's a good thing it's a good thing and it's a good thing and <laughs> if i get married then i won't be in the street sitting right because i was the only scripture i knew was it's better to marry than to burn and I was, I was burning, remember? Okay, so, again, yeah, sin, open the door to the enemy. So, I'm looking at him, I'm thinking, this is a good thing. God's in heaven, like, abort, 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 cancel, you know, stop, delete, block. Like, I did not ordain this, but guess what? Romans 8, 28, <laughs> learned that scripture pretty quick. All things are gonna work together for my good. All things are gonna work together for your good. Even if you get stuck in a good thing, that's not a God thing, okay? It's still gonna work together for your good. Like Joseph said, I, 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 God's gonna bless me. I'm gonna be fruitful in the land of my affliction. I was afflicted in that marriage with number two for almost three years but I was still fruitful. I was still in church, still in the prayer room, still, you know, getting healing and deliverance, but again, didn't know that my inner man, little Charlene, inner child, was not healed. So God, God turned it around for my good, okay? Because I was able, I met divine connections being with him, and, you know, I did learn more about the Lord being with him, and just, you know what I mean? But still, was not supposed to marry him. You got it. Don't, don't tell me in the comments. Now you know. Today you know. You were not supposed to marry that narcissist. You were not supposed to be in business with that narcissist. You were not supposed to move in with that narcissist. Now you know that it looked like a good thing at the time. Now you know that hindsight is twenty twenty, is it? Isn't it? But we're committed. 
to these relationships. I was committed to number two. Like I said, that was the only marriage that I, I fought to try to keep. Even after it was over. Remember, after the divorce was final, I'm still trying to reverse it. I'm still trying to be in his life. I'm still trying to, Lord, that's my family. His family is my family. I need my family. And I'm still trying to show up for Christmas and Thanksgiving and birthdays. And God's like, I ended that because that was not a God thing. You thought it was a good thing, but it was not a God thing. Okay. So just because you need somebody, you need a chick, you need a dude. Again, they look pleasant to your sight, right? They look good for for marrying, right? They look good for 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 for, for raising kids with, right? But wasn't a, it's not a god thing. So, but you you meet them, you marry them, you date them, and, and you're committed to them, and you're dedicated to them, because you're like, this is a good thing. It's a good thing I'm not out here in these streets fornicating and whatnot. I'm married now. That's a good thing. That's what I was thinking, especially with number two. Number two and, 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 and Cookie Monster, but especially number two. I'm thinking, isn't it good that I'm not, I'm not fornicating? Isn't it, isn't it good? But I think I mentioned before, that spirit of lust did not go away just because I was married. I didn't go off and cheat on him while he cheated on me. Again, he owes me nothing, right? Forgiven, whatever, okay? I didn't cheat on him, even though I had a spirit of lust still while we're married. But I still, hmm, okay? Yeah, I'm going to have to write a whole book about it, all right? I was still sinning. Not a shame. And I'm married still to my Anyway, right. don't even have to spell it out. Don't even think about what I'm saying, but you know, you know what I mean. Somebody know what I mean. Anything has to do with your flesh, any sin that you're doing with your actual, you know, your body, those are the hardest, hardest sins to be delivered from, the hardest spirits to get out of you. Anything that you're doing with your body, your you know, you're, you're, you're drinking too much, you're, you're, you're smoking too much, you're, you're taking drugs, you're fornicating, you're doing this. anything that you're doing with your body. Oh, that stuff is so, it's so hard. It took me almost 50 years to get rid of fornicating spirit, lust spirit, everything. It took me decades upon decades, okay? Again. You're getting into this good marriage. You think it's a good thing that you're marrying this person. You think it's a good thing you're in a relationship with this person. But it's not a God thing. Now, if I had just stopped and said, Lord, before I married number two, um, is this you? It, is this you? Should I marry him? Am I doing the right thing? If I had just asked him, God would have been like, no, no, not, not a God thing. Not even a good thing. No, this is not me. This is not my will for your life. Thanks for asking. If I had asked him, ask, ask, and he's going to answer you. Seek, you're, you're going to find, not the door's going to be open to you. Just go to God, just ask him again. Prayer is just a dialogue. Talk to your father. Talk to Abba Father. Okay, he's listening. So what's the title of my first book when heaven hears your prayer okay god is listening all right are you listening <laughs> yeah, that's the question today are you listening so i didn't ask god i just assumed <laughs> you know what people say about assuming certain things i'm not gonna say it because it's youtube uh yeah don't assume it's a god thing just because it looks like it's a good thing just because it's pleasant to your eyes don't just say well it must be god because it's good it must be god because because he's a pk it must be god because his father is a pastor it must be god because he's in church every sunday it must be god because he's in the choir it must don't assume people okay again this is not it doesn't just we don't work with relationships marriage dating whatever 
Even in business, um, there was hmm, two chicks, especially Christian chicks, women of God, who were at church every Sunday. And so I, you know, was committed, dedicated, partnered with them, two different, you know, times of my life. Um, partnered with them to do certain events and set up, you know, some business things. And it, it looked good. I, I'm committed, I'm dedicated to anything that looks, looks like it's God because it looks good. So I'm just assuming if it's good, then it must be God. You know, one girl was a, uh, I had my nonprofit at the time for single moms. And so we said, hey, let's get together and do an event for single moms. I'm like, sure, yes, awesome. This is a good thing, right? It's for single moms for my nonprofit. Like this is, it's a good thing, right? Okay. Oh, I was not supposed to be in partnership with her. That was not a godly soul tie. It wasn't. But she and I had, had so many good times, good times, okay? In the past, we traveled here and there, down to Miami, up to Atlanta, over to Virginia, and always had fun, 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 right? It was always pleasing in my sight and pleasing to my ears and pleasing. It wasn't a God thing, but it took years for my little spiritual eyeballs to be opened and my spiritual ears to be open. But I remember more than one person, more than one real <laughs> woman of God whispered in my ear, be, be careful with her, watch her, be careful. And I was just like, okay, what? Because everything I'm seeing is pleasant in my sight. Everything I'm hearing is pleasant in my sight. But it wasn't. Another lady. Church going lady. I said all my, all my ex-friends are Christians, okay? So we did an event together. It's a prayer event for our church. And so again, it's a good thing. And I'm committed and I'm dedicated, right? Because this is a good thing and this is prayer. I'm going to teach these people how to pray. And it... But our connection, our soul tie was not of God. Good event. Good for the attendees. Our relationship was not of God but it looked good, okay? And it's funny because both of these women, um, I was so close to each of them that when I would go out somewhere without one of them, people would say, oh, where's so-and-so? Oh, where's so-and-so? Well, I see you, where's the other jig? You guys are like this, right? Both of them. And I'd be like, yeah, no, I, I don't know where she is. We're, we're no longer friends. <gasps> people let's let's never can i have a shirt one day and said you know like act like a christian like act, act like a christian okay pretend like jesus saved you and delivered you pretend like you know his word okay all right don't and don't just go around oh i'm blessing how you gave it to the lord and then again you go home and say you're broke or you cussing people out you know doing your own little parking lot ministry cussing folk out because you're in a hurry to get to, you know, Popeye's chicken or Golden Corral after church, right? Because you're just in there praising God, right? And, and it was. So, okay, it looks like good stuff. All of these relationships looked good. These events that I was committed and dedicated to, they looked good. And, 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 and these marriages looked good. And I'm thinking I'm doing a good thing. Well, you know, member number one, I'm pregnant. I, I should be married. We're in college. We're not married. We, we should be married. 
Isn't it a good thing to be married when you, you're gonna be parents? Like, isn't that a good thing? Right. It wasn't a God thing. It wasn't a God thing. Don't get it twisted. It's the difference between a good thing and a God thing. Okay, so that's why we can't just just rely on our natural eyesight or our natural hearing. Okay, we, we got to walk by faith and not by sight. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Don't get it twisted. Don't be deceived by the devil. Don't let the serpent beguile you. Don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. Ask God. Hey, God, is this a God thing or just a good thing? Because I don't want to waste my time and I don't want to do anything that's not pleasing in your sight. And I don't want to end up in divorce court, which they have to make a whole TV show about divorce court. Because there's so much of it, even in the church. So you're thinking... I'm marrying them and it's a good thing because we shouldn't be, you know, shacking. So let's get married. That's a good thing, right? To be married and instead of shacking up with somebody, right? But it's, it may not be a God thing. I wasn't supposed to be with one, two, or three. I wasn't supposed to be married with them. I wasn't. But in my little card online, it's a good thing that I get married because I'm pregnant. It's a good thing that I, I marry a PK and so I'm not burning anymore. It's a good thing that I marry a cooking monster because I need love, right? Right? Because I didn't get it at home. I didn't get it from my family. So it's a good thing that I met a man who really loves me. And it's a good thing I met a man who who, you know, finances is not an issue. Finally, after two marriages that failed because of finances, it's a good thing that I marry a man who says, here's my paycheck. It belongs to both of us. And here's my debit card. Get, get whatever you want. And I'll buy dinner. You don't have to cook. And I'm thinking with my carnal mind, it's a good thing. But I'm not asking God. Is this a God thing? Did you ordain this marriage? You know, the Bible says who, who, who God, God himself is joined together. Let not man put asunder. God didn't join me, but not these dudes. Okay. But again, he made sure it worked together for my good. Everything I learned. Learned about myself, learned about life, learned what to do and what not to do in a marriage. I learned some hard lessons. No, lessons learned. Go, go, go watch our video. I learned some hard lessons. I didn't have to learn them in a hard way. You know, sometimes your kids, you're just like, you know what? Either you're going to do what I tell you to do today or you're going to learn the hard way. That you shouldn't be doing this or saying this. Should committed and dedicated to the Lord. Okay? But to be committed and dedicated to Jesus, to his word, to his will, to his way. Not every good thing is a God thing. So I mean, can you please pause? You can pause this video, okay? Selah. And let me stop and say, okay, is this relationship a God thing? Is this business partnership a God thing? Am, am I living or trying to move to this new city? Is that move, is that transition a God thing? Are you afraid of something in your current, you know, location? Are you trying to escape something? Are you you know, church hopping or job hopping. Oh, these people getting on my nerves. I'm quitting. Oh, this past getting on my nerves. I'm leaving. Oh, but you're, you're going to encounter those same spirits, those same issues at the new job and at the new church. 
because you you didn't say God change me. God doesn't have to change your situation. He can change you in that situation. So there's a storm arising. He doesn't have to say, oh, let me take my poor little baby Charlene out of the storm. I don't want her to get wet. I don't want, to, want her to be afraid of the thunder and the lightning. No, he can say, yes, there's a storm, but I'm going to give you the peace that surpasses all understanding. You're going to stand in that storm and decree and declare to that storm, peace, be still. I'm going to teach you how to do that. That's what he'll do. He doesn't have to move you here, move you here. Especially after number two, we were in that church together, big mega church together. And we got, you know, we were married and divorced there and the whole choir knew all of our business. I wanted to leave that church. I was tortured for, I don't know how many years after we already split up because I'm, he's there. And so I'm seeing him on the stage, you know, doing his little solos. And I just wanna, you know what I'm saying? But I couldn't leave the church. Thank God. Thank God I had enough. Again, safety the most of the counselors. I had enough wisdom around me, enough prayer around me. I was learning God's voice and God's like, stay here. Don't you leave until I tell you to leave. So I ask God, can I go? Can I go? Can I go? Can I go? Every Sunday I got out of my car. Can I go? This ain't my last day. Can I go next week? This, this is my last month. He didn't let me go until it was time for me to go. And I went out in peace. Didn't have to cuss, cuss out the pastor, cuss out the people and just, today's my last day. God didn't tell me till I was in the church, in the pew and he said, today is your last day. And I said, then I cried. Cause I'm like, I just met 5,000 awesome people of God and now I gotta leave them. Hello. But it was that, it was my time. So don't leave until God says leave. So even if you find yourself again in a situation that you thought was a good thing and you thought it was a God thing, but it's really not a God thing. It's just a good thing to your eyeballs and to your natural ears. Don't even leave until God says, okay, God, I didn't ask you before I jumped in this pool. So I'm asking you now to get me out of this pool, but just get, give me some floaties so I don't sink, so I don't drown while I'm here and I'll wait for you to rescue me. So wait, wait for the Lord and be of good courage, be of good cheer and he will strengthen your heart, okay? Okay, so thank you guys so much for watching this video, for liking and sharing this video. Thank you for being on my channel as always and for subscribing to my channel and hitting that little notification bell on my channel. I really do appreciate you guys and I pray that these messages bless you again if you have any prayer requests any comments that you can't leave in a public forum you can always reach me directly on my website takeupthysword.com and all of my social media links are in the channel description you guys be blessed and you be safe